Well, welcome back to another 3.8 edit tutorial for the VC. This time we'd look at DIY wipes using the mask tool. Uh, Do-it-yourself wipes uh, generally involve animated wipes or maybe animating a uh, black and white image by use of contrast. So then, you, what, am I, what do I mean by that? So let's have a look for VSE. I'm going Control Left. Here we are. Control Cursor to flick through my uh, displays. But anyway, here's the VSE that I've set up earlier. Currently, I have a strip at the bottom here, which is our A strip, and it transitions into our B strip on top just replaces the uh, edit underneath. Uh, I can change where I'd like my edit to begin by sliding that. I'm just right mouse click and dragging or I could select it by right mouse clicking and then pressing the G key to drag it like that. Uh, anyway what I'd like to do is dress up that transition where it's just a cut at the moment of course I could use a dissolve like this I could select the bottom track and the top track together with shift and right click I could then go to add and go to effect and we could do a let's see you could do a wipe like this and you can define the wipe over here wipe type, single, double, iris, clock, there's a clock. Why don't we make our own though? So let's just delete that effect. Select, we don't have to select any of them at the moment. Let's import a graphic or a black and white piece of artwork. So we'll go down to image import, shift A for add, and we'll go to radial texture. Here's a texture I created earlier. Let's have a quick look at that. Show me a picture. Here it comes, here it comes. And there it is. So we'll go add image strip. It's at the bottom, it's being hidden at the moment. I'll uh, press the page up button to snap to the beginning of the next clip. I'll highlight with the right or select with the right mouse button the radial texture that I just imported. I'll press press shift S to snap it into the right place. Now I'll press G for drag and the Y key to constrain it. Now I can only move vertically on the Y axis. Left click to let go and drop it there. And now I have this gradient occurring. You can see that the gradient starts on one side and wraps around to the other. And what this should do is, in, is in imply uh, a mask for our incoming shot or shot B here. So what I can do is alter the contrast and brightness of this strip to animate it. So let's see, we'll use a strip modifier and we'll add brightness and contrast for this strip. So what we'll do is we'll go to the beginning of the strip make set a value of say I think it's negative 50 I've tested it earlier and keyframe that Oops. contrast set the contrast to say at 100 and move down to the other end of the strip where we'd like the effect to end and make a new keyframe. This time it'll be a positive value of 50 and make that a keyframe with the I key or you could right mouse click on it and select oh, insert keyframe which doesn't appear because I already have a keyframe there. You can see the keyframes on the bottom in this timeline first one and the second one. Nothing seems to be happening at the moment. I'll refresh the sequencer. Maybe I have too much contrast. I do so you can see that I can change how much, how many grey values there are from complete black to complete white. Uh, so this would be the uh, the feathered edge of your effect. So, whoops, take it to something like that. So now we can see our clock effect, radial wipe occurring. 
Now, how do we apply that to the strips below? Let's hide this. So we'll scroll up to the very top and poke it in the eye to hide the item. And we'll come down to the B or incoming strip. Let's scroll down again and add a mask modifier. <coughs> I'll turn that off first. So we'll go strip, mask, that's what kind of mask. We'll select a strip for a mask and in the mask window we'll click on here with the left mouse button and select the mask type, uh, the mask input that we require. So we'll choose radial JPEG, uh, radial ping, so radial texture ping. And because I've already modified it you can see the effect of that modification where it was white to black so the outgoing shot is in the black and the incoming shot is in the white region with the feathered edge where the grey was. So if I scrub along there you can see that effect working now. And we can modify the, um, <coughs> if we look at the dope sheet above here which I've selected to look at, you can see the keyframes beginning to the end. You could oops, G to drag that out a bit more. We could move that to make it slower. I press refresh sequencer just to update the keyframes of the animation curve. And if we want more graduation in here we need to go back to our radial ping and change the contrast ratio. Press refresh. There we go. If we unhide that with Alt H, we should be able to see the changes that you make to the gradient more interactively. Hide that again with H. Press refresh and get a more gradual transition. So this isn't going to play back terribly well, but let's try anyway. Press the, uh, you should really render this probably. Press the play button. And there's the wipe occurring. Mm, seems to have a residual um, amount of wipe occurring there. So, what would be the easiest way would be to animate the contrast, I think. So, we might put a keyframe on the contrast. Oops. Refresh. Keyframe. Refresh. And let's Try posting play again. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Coming up to the end of the animation. And, well, it disappears. So there you go. So that's how you generally animate. Now, if <coughs> you wouldn't have to do these animated uh, contrast values or brightness values if you're using uh, an animation that already transitioned from white to black. Perhaps you have built your own wipe or you have an animation of, um, I don't know, another person or object moving that creates a white boundary that uh, um, is covered by, uh, or starts off in white and ends up in black, much like Oops, Alt H to hide, much like this. So, oh, sorry, starting in black and animating around to white. Uh, there you go. So that's using the mask strip modifier. I'll just turn that off. Mask strip modifier on the incoming shot uh, to create um, a key effect. Now, do bear in mind that when you add shots to start with, if you just import a movie, let's just import a movie any movie will do. If you import this movie it starts off as a cross type and that won't work because you need to turn on the alpha channel. So if I delete that and demonstrate it, if I go to cross 
it's not revealing what's underneath so what you need to do is change it to overdrop or alpha over to activate the alpha channel and reveal what might be below it so there you go uh, that's how you can create your own wipes using the wonderful new uh, strip modifier with new and improved functionality with the mask tool. There's lots of wonderful things, wonderful things you can do with the mask. Uh, one of the other things I've done is produce interlaced images by um, um, speeding up my footage from 50 frames per second uh, to 25 frames per second, duplicating it and interlacing it with another um, version of the same footage um, so that I effectively uh, co-locate two frames in the one place uh, and the image that I use for that is this interlace ping that looks lovely doesn't it but if I zoom right in you can see that it's alternating black and white lines so each image would go here and here and then the alternating line would go here and here and I apply that to my source as a mask as well you zoom out with the home button press hide go down here now I can't add another strip modifier because I'm already using one for the wipe I would have to press K to cut that now remove highlight the strip remove the old wipe and perhaps add a mask or oh, add a sorry a curve and we'll call it interlace as you can see at the moment it's making it transparent should be a hundred percent, doesn't seem to be a hundred percent transparent though. Whoops. Hmm. Not sure why we're not getting enough alpha value out of that at the moment. Ah. Interlace ping. Oh, got it on as a mask. Anyway, I don't think I have the right values for my uh, interlace. As you can see, these greys, they shouldn't be there. So it's um, a scaling error that I've created the artwork with, so I'd have to fix that first. I guess what I could do is add a curve, increase the contrast. Hmm. Still seem to have a contrast issue, don't I? Hide that, then add mask, select interlace, and uh, my interlace image is incorrect because it's the wrong uh, the wrong ratio of lines. But you get the idea. Cuts holes in the image anyway. So there's another use for using the mask in the VSE. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick demonstration of performing a wipe and I hope to see uh, lots of ideas on uh, how to use it yourself. Anyway, um, good luck with that and uh, please let me know if in the uh, comments page, uh, comments below on the YouTube page if there's anything else that you'd like to see um, illustrated or demonstrated uh, for the VSE, that would be great. Um, once again, thanks very much and uh, catch up with me uh, as 3 Point Edit on Twitter or uh, I'm at the Blender Artist uh, uh, compositing um, thread uh, forum subboard quite a lot. Uh, ask me any questions there and we'll try and sort out an answer. Uh, once again, thanks very much.